Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Dear beloved Reverend Fathers and Brethren in Christ, today is the Feast of Feasts and a day to rejoice with the heavenly hosts and proclaim saying, Christ is risen, truly he is risen. It is the day that Christ the King defeated all pain and suffering and overcame death itself and granted us the opportunity of eternal life if we believe in him and live according to his commandments. Through the resurrection of Christ, we have hope of a brighter future. Even when matters look very bleak and dark, yet the risen Christ shines and gives us comfort. This past year in particular, the world has witnessed many atrocities against Christians, and in particular in the Middle East. Several evil terrorist organizations have attempted to annihilate Christians from villages, towns, and cities, destroy their churches, and kill innocent men, women, and children. Many of us have witnessed such atrocities on television with great pain and a sense of helplessness. One such example that is imprinted in our hearts and minds was that of the courageous 21 martyrs in Libya, of whom 20 were Coptic Christians and one other from African descent. They were brave and did not weaken in front of the swords of their enemies and were faithful to their last breath calling upon the name of the risen Christ, and in an instant were with Christ in the paradise. I spent much time thinking and praying about this atrocity. I wondered about these martyrs, simple men with perhaps average education, and yet with profound faith. I wondered about what went through their minds, weeks, days, hours, and seconds before their death. I also thought about their families, wives, young children, mothers, fathers, brothers and sisters, and many loved ones that they left behind. What were all these loved ones going through? What were their hopes and wishes? Then two weeks ago, I had the blessing of meeting these families in Egypt face to face. This was a humbling experience for my life and a lesson that was so profound. It was a lesson about forgiveness. Yes, these families were in deep sorrow. That is only human, but there was more. One young wife of a martyr who brought her young daughter with her, said to me, I desire to meet the member of Daesh who killed my husband, and I want to kiss his feet, since it is because of him that now my husband has become a martyr. This was no masochistic thought that this blessed woman was parading to the world but a true Christian understanding of forgiveness and gratefulness that her husband remained Christian till his last breath. The father of another martyr stood before me and said, when I heard about the capture of my son, I prayed that he would remain strong and not lose his faith. And when I heard about the video, I requested to see it. I wanted to see the video to make sure that it was my son. And when I saw him and made sure that he was martyred, I took my other son in my arms and I went to sleep. 
Yes, I went to sleep peacefully, knowing that my son has become a martyr for Christ and that he remained strong to the end and did not deny his Christ. This is forgiveness. This is true faith in the risen Christ who takes away our pain and wipes away our every tear and grants us hope of a brighter future. These blessed and simple families teach us all a powerful lesson in forgiveness. We cannot learn and live this lesson unless we are in a deep relationship with the risen Christ. The Lord said on the cross when he was being crucified and suffering for humanity, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they do, as mentioned in the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 23, verse 34. How many times we read in the scriptures the teachings of the risen Christ to love our enemies and to do good to those who hate us and pray for those who spitefully use us and persecute us, as mentioned in the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 5, verse 44. Yet many times we cannot even forgive our loved ones or our close friends if they do, if they do wrong by us. We can today learn an important lesson of forgiveness from the families of our martyrs in how to be Christ-like and how they forgave like he forgave his enemies on the cross. Even if the evil that is done to us reaches to physical harm and a threat to one's life, we must humble ourselves before the risen Christ and imitate him in all that he taught us and especially in this powerful lesson of forgiveness. For it is the strong person who can forgive and forget the wrongs of others, and it is the weak person who curses, injures, or kills fellow human beings. That is why the image of the cross is such a powerful image. It is an image of power and forgiveness and not weakness at all. There is no resurrection without the cross and there is no glory without suffering. Let us then, my dear beloved brethren, rejoice in this message of forgiveness that Christ presents to us through his suffering, death, and resurrection. It is a message that is more powerful than any violence, hate, evil, or sword. Forgiveness is a message that brings comfort to one's heart and fills a person with joy that they can participate if even in a small way in the forgiveness that Christ showed to all of us on the cross. This we do by forgiving one another as Christ taught us in the Lord's Prayer, saying, as we forgive those who trespass against us. I pray that you may rejoice during this Feast of the Resurrection with a spiritual rejoicing and be glad at Christ's forgiveness of our weaknesses and sins. Christ died for our sins and gave us new life through his glorious resurrection. We pray that the risen Christ may heal our broken world and that humans may learn to live peacefully with each other and learn this important lesson of forgiveness that we learn from this blessed and holy feast. 
We pray for our mother church in Egypt, for His Holiness Pope Tawadros II, the members of our Coptic Synod, our clergy, and for Copts around the world. May the risen Lord bestow the joy of His resurrection to each of you and to your blessed families. Be absolved through the Holy Spirit, and glory be to God forever. Amen.